Hi there, Trina here. A few months ago, I created these handy little people icons in PowerPoint and shared them with the eLearning Heroes community as a free download. And since then, I've gotten several requests to explain my process for creating these icons. So I thought I'd take a few minutes to walk you through the process. So before we get started, I'm using PowerPoint 2013, but you'll need at least PowerPoint 2010 installed to take advantage of the extended shape formatting features I'm about to show you. So if you are running an older version of PowerPoint, you may not be able to replicate these steps. Okay, so with that out of the way, here are the finished icons I created. You'll note that they're all different shapes grouped together, which makes them very flexible and easy to customize. I was inspired by some similar icons I found on Pinterest. These icons had a half shaded effect that made them very interesting to me, and I found it easy to recreate this effect in PowerPoint. So let me show you just how to do it. First, let's start with an oval shape, and we'll fill it with this tan color. This is going to be our base shape for the head of our icon. Now I'll copy that shape using Control C to copy and Control V to paste. Then I'll just recolor the second oval with a slightly darker tone of the same color. Now I've got two nearly identical ovals, but what I want is essentially for this darker oval to be cut in half, so I get kind of a facial shape uh, that's an oval but with a two-toned effect. That's where I'm going to use another drawing shape, essentially a straight edge, to slice this darker oval in half. So let's draw a quick rectangle here, and I'm just going to position it on the vertical midpoint of this darker oval. It doesn't really matter what color the rectangle is because it's really just going to be used as a straight edge. On the Drawing Tools Format menu, select the Merge Shapes drop-down. I'm choosing Subtract, but as you can see here, you can also Unite, Combine, Fragment, and Intersect Shapes to achieve different effects. And voila! Now I've got a half oval that I can overlay on my lighter oval to create that shaded face effect. This simple, very powerful technique of subtracting shapes from one another is about 90% of the effort that goes into creating these icons and their accessories. So now let me show you how I created the hair for my people icons, because this is a little more freeform and imprecise than what we've been doing. I use PowerPoint's Curve Line tool to create most of the hairstyles for my icons. Honestly, there's really no trick to it. Just select the curve line and click periodically to draw some curved shapes that vaguely resemble the contours you see in different textures and styles of hair. To close off the curve shape, simply connect the endpoint with the starting point. And from here you can fill, stretch, and combine these amorphous shapes to form something that looks like a good head of hair. I found it helpful to overlap my shapes on the oval head shape as I made small adjustments to their size and position. As long as the shapes you're creating are in scale with the icon's head, you really can't go wrong here, so just play around with this a little until you get the effect you're looking for. You can even arrange some darker shapes behind the lighter ones to mimic depth or layers of hair. Generally, I find the simpler the shapes, the better, since these icons are really designed to be very clean and simple looking. To create the shoulders, simply insert a rounded same side corner rectangle from the Drawing Shapes menu. Just remove any outline fill, and then use the same process we used with the oval to achieve that half shading effect. And within a few minutes, you've created a person-shaped icon that you can replicate over and over again with different skin tones, different colored hair, different clothing and accessories, you name it. You can also apply these techniques to create all sorts of custom icons for your studio or storyline projects. I've created workplace safety icons, animal icons, you name it, all by just combining and subtracting shapes and using some creative effects with the curve tool. So that's a wrap, folks. I hope you found these tips helpful, and I'll see you next time.